Hi, this is Peter Grenader. And if you have about 12 minutes and you're curious, I'm going to be going through my live rig, my performance modular synthesizer, module and row at a time. First, starting with the left side cabinet, top row, we have, of course, two Plan B Model 15 oscillators, a Plan B wave splicer, and a third Model 15 oscillator. I have a ton of 2HP modules in this rig, and this is the bulk mixer I use for the oscillators and the, and the wave splicer. There's an IntelliJ wave folder and a Motomouth uh, format filter by LimeFlow. Wonderful thing. Sounds great. Um, of course, this is a live rig. Queuing is important. This is a Plan B headphone preamp. And this is one of two attenuators that may leave the system. I'll explain to that in a second. Second row, a Model 25, which is a sort of Swiss Army knife audio processor. It has a wave shaper and or attenuator on top, a noise source up on top, a standard VCA, and a really nice ring modulator with a, a distort function. I'm now moving to the prototype ear model 12 mark II dual filter vacro filter it has the same four outputs but it goes to full res uh, resonance now you can run it in parallel you can share an input to two filters you can run two filters in serial from any tap the model 41 steiner 4p filter that we released last year with niall steiner I have two, excuse me, one Model 10 here and a Model 9 mixer. There's two Model 9s in the system. This is a Dofer manual trigger module. I might not need this anymore. I'll explain that in a second. A Model 13 uh, ear t dual timbre gate. And this is a single gate, um, you know, uh, a one-off, uh, one more low-pass gate. That Model 33 here never was released. It was scheduled to come out in 2009 we all know what happened this is a triple standard vca with a a bust of shared vc input and a mixed uh unity gain mixed output or separate outputs or vc inputs another attenuator two model 37 lfos which can be used for oscillators two more model 10 envelope generators another model 9 mixer and one of two Heisenberg random generators, smooth on top, stepped on bottom. That's a grain shift um, by audio damage. I, I love this thing. I do a lot of processing of samples and vocal sounds, and it's really great for that. Last row, my trusty Dofer phase shifter. I've had this forever. I love that thing. Here's another module by ear that never came out, the Model 34. It's a dual actually tri modules, three modules in there. It's a four step se sequential switch with gate outputs and go um, left, right, or random. And the bottom half is a dual analog switch, uh, double pole, which has a normal signal pin. So you can drive both with one signal or use two different. That's the Model 23 analog shift register. And this is the Model 32 vector plotter. It's a two coordinate joystick. And it was the first that was made that had active motion sensing. So when you move the x-axis, uh, you get a, a positive gate during the duration of the movement. You have a separate y-axis active gate, and you have a combined x-y active gate. So when you're in motion, you have a high signal, so you can trigger other events to start and stop with your movement of your joystick. That was the Model 28 tap clock, and this is the PT uh, Audio Dual Digital Oscillator. Not the best in the world. It, it, it's a little bit low resolution, but it sounds great, and I use it all the time. My buffered malt, why not? I invented them, and I just got a disc thing, and I really like it. The thing's great, and I suspect that blank panel there is not going to be there that long. Let's go to the other side. The module is a 2HP ADSR, and then the Model 7, the Ear Model 7 um, Panner Crossfader. It's a great module. I haven't released it yet. It has really great center imaging. It'll come. Uh, the old tool scope, greatest thing ever made. Uh, my rusty, trusty Dofer dual quantizer and 
uh, my pre and two um, envelope detectors. I have two of them. I do a lot of processing of vocal lines that are sampled, and I want to be able to trigger changes based on the tracking the the speech. And this is what I do it with. Okay, a Circuit Abbey um, boilerplate ADSR. And next to that is the prototype Model 27, year Model 27 After Effects generator. It hasn't been released yet. Uh, it's got three delays, two reverbs, an octavizer, which is great, and a bit cruncher and distortion. Uh, all three operands are voltage controllable. Um, and this is the first Model 27. This was paper faceplate, man. I made this for the 2006 NAM show. It's still humming along. I love delays. I have three of them in the system. And um, it's a lot different in character than the, f the later 27, but it's effective, and I need both. This is the Model 26. It's a Swiss Army knife module for control stuff, Boolean, in the top, it has a voltage mirror in the middle and a portamento on the bottom. A voltage mirror is an inverter that's offset positive, so nothing dips in, into the negative field, but it's a logic state inverter. Those are two um, malts that are probably going to go away. That's the Model 21C ear uh, Mini Milton voltage controllable sequencer. Uh, this is the second of two of my uh, Heisenberg randoms. Uh, I love the Dofer um, frequency shifter, and I modified it so it can take in external inputs and not use the internal oscillator. This is a Topo Brillo uh, Buchla clone dual function generator, a mutable rings, and my dear, dear Plan B Model 17 triple event timer. It sold horribly. No one understood what it did, but it really is a functional module. Now, this is my... Uh, the 2HP block, I have a ton of them here in these two rows. Um, you'll notice I have one passive malt. I put it in there because my fingers are really big and it's hard for me to turn these knobs when some of these modules are adjacent. That's the only solution I could find. So I have a random a, a pulse divider multiplier, a 16 step sequencer, there's another one in the row down, and a four gang mixer for the four Vox digital VCO, I really love this thing. I had um, a shapeshifter. I had a Waldorf, got rid of them. This thing was very musical for live. I like it. These are my two um, nebulae. Again, I do a lot of processing of found sound and vocals, and I need those. Two single um, uh, voltage processors with Glide and my Plan B model 27, excuse me, 17 dual voltage processor. Each has a sum, min, and max voltage output, and there's a crossfader in the middle that crossfades the sum outputs of the two by default, or you can insert in s internal signals. That was a real Swiss Army knife. Uh, there's bipolar attenuators f throughout. You can use it for audio, but you gotta be careful because you can send things against the rail because there's an offset in the output. Now on to the last row, uh, more 2HP stuff. Uh, that's the Freeze just came out. I bought it the same day I got the Tip Top 1 for very specific reasons. I tandem them together. I like the one. Um, it's very malleable. You can, you can alter the sound very easily. A lot of the remaining stuff you're not going to see anywhere else. Uh, these are custom modules. The one I'm hitting right now is a w Spark Fun Wave Trigger Board that I modulized eight voices of samples. Um, they can be fired off by either depression of a button or through triggers. The gate, MIDI gate module is next to it for a reason. I use a eight pad um, iPad touch controller that I can fire these voices uh, from that iPad. That's why they're next to each other. Uh, my Dofer MIDI to CV, I'll probably get another one. That one doesn't need to be that wide. I never used the USB function. The one next to it, the Model 720 st Stereo Jenny Looper, is actually a modulized electroharmonics looper. Um, I added some features on the bottom there because it's very easy to do. I can loop and stop and send it to reverse and half speed by triggers. I also added input attenuators. That thing's involved, uh, designed for a guitar pedal, a guitar signal, which is 30 milliamps, so you gotta attenuate the inputs you clip. 
That module at the end, the analog solutions sample and hold LFO, was one of the first modules I ever had. I don't need it. So that one might go, I mean, I, I need a sample and hold. I can always use it, always use another um, LFO, but it's wide and it doesn't need to be. I've modded it. See that pot, little pot in the middle that's a gizmotron bipolar attenuator. So let's go to the center panel now. Okay, so um, what I've done, these two road cases were unstable on these two separate stands. I needed something in the middle to stabilize the top. So I, I got this piece of metal and I used the end, the far end, you're gonna see a mount for the illumination system. But I had this four inch space, two inches of which there's a lot of room to put stuff in there. So I put a bunch of passive devices in there. I have six uh, five position uh, molts, there they are. Obviously, I record the audio later. Um, there's the mount for the um, lights. This is uh, RGB lights, and that's regular right angle aluminum extrusion you get from a hardware store stuck on a gooseneck for a microphone. Okay? It really lights up well, and believe it or not, that bar in the middle doesn't really block your view of other players. Uh, it's really thin. Above the mults, I have four passive attenuators because people don't put attenuators in modules anymore and up on top I have my main out so MIDI mini excuse me 3.5 millimeter to stereo phones unbalanced so the way this works out is all I need I have a drum stool I sit on all I need is an AC outlet and a PA to plug in I'm ready to go everything's on the move so that's the system, the electronics anyway. I do want to take a second though to talk about the case because there's a lot of decisions there as well. It took me a year and a half to get this thing put together and I thought everything through to complement what I need live. And uh, you might find this information useful. So these two cases are designed for small outboard mixing consoles. I got two of them, they have slant tops. Not too high, I want to be able to see the players around me. Um, they sit on top of these two quick lock, really sturdy uh, foldable stands, really heavy. Uh, I intentionally got my case longer than I needed because up there underneath the perforated aluminum extrusion, I have my power supplies and it keeps the heat out of the system. You can see one of them there. Um, each cabinet, oh, they're held in place with these three standoffs, which are eight inch uh, wooden dollies that are bolted and glued in the base of the case. It's very sturdy. Um, each cabinet has two power supplies, about five and a half, six amps per side. I intentionally um, keep my power system very efficient. I don't tax my supplies. I want my oscillators stable. Uh, I don't want any surprises. Uh, and I've also separated the power on the control and the audio modules on both sides in an attempt to keep things as quiet as they can be in the architecture of your rack power bus which is clamorous it's not a quiet bus and uh, I don't need noise coming through speakers in a lot of performance situation in the back I have the, of course the uh, power cable input and the fuse and the power switch and on the back of the extrusion I have the wall wart input and the output from the LED controller that goes through a TRRS for conductor cable through the gooseneck of my lights because this whole thing comes apart. Um, it unscrews at the base right there and it makes it mobile friendly. Um, you can't move this thing around if it's bolted together. It's like carrying around moose horns. Uh, I have an iPad that's held in place on one of the stands of the quick lock and why I said I don't think I need the Dofer uh, gate buttons because I now do it like this. Okay, so this is my intention. That's a polyphonic sample player um, and I'm able to uh, play events and I can connect that output of that MIDI to CV to anything and trigger things with my iPad. I also use it for um, MIDI sequencing. So there it is. Um, my system. I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed doing it. 
Um, for those that are interested, it's January 1st, 2018. Let's make it a good one. Peace out. <laughs>